Now, the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan Samson Ayokune, Dr. Paul Enenche, and some civil society groups has decried attacks against Christians across the country, insisting that the current administration has not done enough to halt the growing insecurity. Ayokune, who spoke at a press conference organized by Dunamis to mark the second year anniversary of Leah Sharibu in captivity, said the country had drifted into anarchy, insisting that Christians were being targeted targeted amid the insecurity in the country. Speaking amid tears from victims, families of victims and sympathizers who narrated ordeals of onslaught by Boko Haram and kidnappers, especially in the Northeast, Ayokunle, who was represented by his deputy, Dr. Caleb Ahima, said, and I quote, we call on the federal government today that we are getting to a point of anarchy. It is the constitutional responsibility of government to protect lives and the property of citizens, end of quote. Now in studio with me is still Lulu Elegbe, and also we will be having a Polycap Baja of Nigerian Evangelical Missions via phone to still uh, have this conversation. Um, let me start with you who are in studio. There's, we've had challenges of naming, you know, calling names in this country and identifying the issues. What do you think is the problem here? Um, you know, Khan is saying that Christians have been targeted. On the other hand, we heard the presidency saying the other time that, oh no, it's not Christians who have been targeted. What do you think is the real situation here? Um, I think it's unfortunate that Khan has gone the route of um, distinguishing um, the religions of victims, whether mm -hmm. it's um, saying Christians are being targeted or... But the reality is that the Boko Haram, so far anyway, hasn't typically discriminated between Christians and Muslims. They've killed anyone who doesn't subscribe to their view, their violent, um, perverted view of Islam. And it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or a Muslim. There are many Muslims, mo actually most Muslims, don't even subscribe to their view of Islam. So uh, in their eyes, those ones are as bad as Christians who are not um, Islam, who don't follow Islam in the first place. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest with ourselves. The epicenter of the Boko Haram menace has been the northeast of the country. The northeast is predominantly Muslim. There are Christians there, yes. But the, so the only way that anyone can justify the statement that more Christians have been victims of Boko Haram is, is almost saying that there are more Christians in the Northeast than Muslims. That's not true. Yeah. That's, that's one part of the, of the debate. The other part of it is I'm not quite sure why it matters where they are, what religion the victims are. The reality is Nigerians have been killed. So it really shouldn't matter if they're Muslims, if they're Christians, or if they don't even believe in any, in any religion, if they're atheists. Why, what difference does it make? But Nigerians the, are being killed. Yeah, That's I, the most I important thing. I understand, but most recently, uh, mm. we've seen that the attacks have been more largely on mm. Christians, you know. Yeah, so there was this debate, I think, a couple of weeks ago when um, I think Khan mentioned that um, Christians were being killed or were being intentionally targeted mm -hmm. and, and the presidency said no, um, they just kill anybody. And I think it was last week the information minister, um, Lai Mohammed, said Boko Haram have now changed tactics to intentionally target Christians. Now, I don't believe that those things are mutually exclusive. What I believe is that from the beginning we, we could all see that Boko Haram didn't really care if you're a Christian or Muslim, they just killed anyone who they felt was not part of them. Mm -hmm. In the last few weeks or months, I, I don't know which it is, yes, they, you, you can see that they've started to, they've changed, like um, Mr. Lai Mohammed said, they've started to actually target Christians because they want, to, they want this to become a Christian versus Muslim thing. Mm -hmm. Now, my disappointment with Khan is that they are feeding this narrative. Because when you start to say, um, the, when, when that attack in, I think it was in Damaturi a few weeks ago, um, where quite a few people were killed mm. on the highway mm. because the, the gates into one of the towns had been shot by the military and Boko Haram came and attacked them. There was a statement by Khan saying that that attack was actually targeted at Khan members who were going for um, some Conference. function. And I felt that was a very irresponsible statement to make because 
Um, first of all, I thought that was an opportunistic attack. Um, I don't believe it had anything do to do with the officials. Do you think they're playing victims? Yes, they are, because I, I think they are. Because the reality is that when you start to put out statements like that and you say that the, the reason um, this attack happened because of Khan officials, as Khan, you can't say, you shouldn't say that because all, what you're doing is you're stoking the divisions that these people are trying to create. Well, those divisions are there. But for a group like Khan, even a group like Moriku, their, their respons it's their responsibility to ensure that that religious cohesion within the two, with, the, with Christians and Muslims is enhanced as much as possible. But statements like that, the only thing it does is drive those divisions because they cannot, Khan cannot tell me that of the people that were killed that day, that um, it was only Christians that were killed on that day. There were Muslims killed that day. Mm. But statements like that from Khan make it sound like it doesn't matter that Muslims were killed on that day. That, okay, yes, it was Khan officials that they targeted. Why, why, why does that matter? You were saying that um, essentially uh, the big issue is that Nigerian life matters, whether you're Christians or, or Christian or Muslim. Yeah. It's not the issue here. However, um, because we are looking at the way things are unfolding on a daily basis, don't you think it's difficult to see achieve the same religious cohesion? Because yes. if outrightly you see someone as an enemy, for lack mm. of a better word, how, how best can you achieve that? Yeah, but here's the problem. Boko Haram doesn't speak for Islam. Boko Haram doesn't speak for Muslims in Nigeria. So when people start to say this is Christian versus Muslim thing, I don't understand that argument because this is terrorist versus victims. It's not, this is not a Christian Muslim thing. Again, I'll come back to you sure. really. Um, I understand Polycap is on the line. Good morning, Polycap. Good morning, how are you? I'm very well. Thank you for joining us on News on the Hour this morning. Now we are talk we're having this conversation, hopefully you had listened in, uh, talking about Khan's statement and uh, the fact that they are saying uh, Christians are the ones most targeted. In your position as a Christian leader, how do you, how do, what do you make of all of this uh, going on between Khan, between uh, the president's statement and, of course, the activities of the terrorists in recent time? Well, in the first place, um, it wasn't just a claim of Khan. Boko Haram, who have perpetrated this atrocity, have been very clear in their intention. They have been deliberate about it, and they've been very clear in their statements. They've said, this is what they are doing. We're going to kill the Christians, and we will continue to do that. We want to establish an Islamic caliphate. What I think Khan has done was just simply to put them. And I think that um, it is very clear in Nigeria today where they stand. You can't begin to speak for them when they have spoken for themselves. So it is very clear what Khan is speaking is simply quoting what they said. And so if you're talking about Boko Haram, they are very clear what their target, what their intention is. It's an Islamic jihad. They have an, a, a religious cleansing that is, that is going on and definitely uh, their aim is to establish an Islamic caliphate. As far as you are concerned, uh, it's, a clear, it's a clear statement that Christians are being targeted. Yes, now, definitely. Uh, having said that, uh, we are having the conversation of, uh, here with uh, an analyst in the studio and we're talking of religious cohesion and saying it seems that um, if Khan is making statements such as these, uh, Khan is playing the victim, is that supposed to be the true st uh, stance of Khan or the true situation in your own assessment? First of all, let me say very clearly, what you see with the situation of Boko Haram and the Fulani so-called herdsmen militia is a clear case of security failure by the regime and by the government. They failed this country. People kill for ethnic excuses. They kill for religious excuses. They also kill for partisan excuses. You have a nation where people have been killed in tens of thousands. This is a breach of security. It is fundamentally a failure of security 
by the government. So when we are talking about an issue like this, uh, it's not a case of Khan being the victim. Uh, Nigerians are being killed in tens of thousands. And then you, you, I mean, the government comes out to be, to be wording uh, something like uh, farmer herders clash. It's just like um, armed robbers killing people on Ore Road. And then you say that there were some armed businessmen that were having clashes with unarmed travelers. That is insane. What you see here is a case of invasion, decimation, and occupation of indigenous Nigerian land by terrorists. They have been certified as terrorists even by the United Nations. I don't know what we're doing here, trying to, uh, to be either politically correct or something or hiding our heads in the sand. It is very clear where they stand. And what is happening in Nigeria right now is a failure of security. Simple. All right. Uh, let's talk about solution, right? Um, whether or not we like it, both Christians and Muslims and people of other religious persuasions will continue to be in Nigeria as, as long as they are nationals. And as long as we are here, uh, we want to seek solution. What do you think will be the role of religious organization, you know, uh, to be able to fight or curb this, uh, all of these insurgencies and the activities of terrorists that is almost living with us, so to speak? I think that the leadership is already doing what they need to do, which is speaking about it. Khan or religious bodies are not equipped by law or by instrument of state to deal with terrorists. Let me go back to the example I just spoke right now. If armed robbers are killing people in Ore and travelers that are applying that route, you, you don't go back to Lagos town or Ibadan or somewhere and begin to gather Christians and Muslims and tell them to tolerate one another. It's a criminal act of terrorism going on, and that is not being addressed. It's a deflection and a distraction of the real issue. And this is what has been happening. You have a case of criminal indulgence that has gone on for a decade, and you're gathering Christians and Muslims together to talk on what? There are criminals on the street killing people and maiming them by various claims. It's the same thing that happens during elections. People die in Nigeria because of elections. You don't go and be talking to people about religion. No, you go after the perpetrators of this evil mm. and deal with them. That has not been done. Let me tell you an example. Let me give you an example. A few years ago at Boston, two brothers blew up two bombs, homemade bombs, at a marathon event. The United States released 6,000 security agents. In 48 hours, those two brothers were apprehended and brought to book. Mm -hmm. America was telling the world the value they placed on the life of American citizens. How can over 30, 50,000 Nigerians have been killed over one decade and we don't have the leaders who are responsible for these atrocities brought to book, we have not been able to neutralize these terrorist gangs, something is wrong. All right, uh, we we'll unfortunately have to leave it there. Thank you so very much, uh, Reverend Polycarp, for your time with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Right.